Jasmine. Oh, Jasmine. Nia. Yes, I'm I like doing it. well. It's Thank different. You. It's different. Jazz, where are you from? Originally, I'm from Louisiana, but I'm in Houston. Texas. I'm in Houston, Texas as well. Maybe you should come yeah. to my live podcast. We spoke. Question. We spoke about it. Yeah, on the phone? we spoke about it. No, we spoke about it on um, direct messages about okay. it. Because okay. you were looking for a videographer. I shared with you a contact for it. Okay, cool. All right. Mm -hmm. Have you bought my books? I have not bought your books yet, but we did okay. talk about them. We talked about all that in the... Okay, yeah. so you wanted... So what was your question exactly? I want, <laughs> I want, I want everybody to hear it. Okay, so I said, are we encouraging no sex before marriage or not? Like, I just, I just literally, I've never caught you live. Mm -hmm. I don't get on social media that much. Okay. I just clicked on and saw it. I was like, oh, okay, let me see what's going on. Because you did invite me. I plan to come. And I liked what you were talking about before. Okay. So, yeah. So, your question is. I just wanted is, to are, understand. Yeah. Are we encouraging? No waiting. sex before marriage. Yeah, I am. Uh, if you're a virgin, yes. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. If you're a virgin, I encourage that. You deserve a man to wait until the cows come home. If you are not a virgin, right? So, <laughs> this, all right. I don't know how. I don't know how old you are, but I'm like I'm a little old. I'm a little older. Um, or whatever the case okay. may be. And at my age, mm -hmm. there's no way because I started having. I started having sex. At um probably I don't know 13, 14, 12, I don't know, one of those rare young ages, right? Mm -hmm. And most women that I, I know started having sex 13, 14, 15, 16, you know, whatever, whatever. There's no way that a woman could sit down in front of me. There's no way that, that you could sit down in front of me and you're not a virgin and you're telling me that all of a sudden you had this awakening at 40 years old and now you want me. None of the 50 dicks before me had to wait, make you a wife or any of that. None of the people that you produce children with had to wait or go through any of that. But you're going to sit in front of me, a man that actually likes you, a man that actually wants to be with you, a man that actually is interested in you. You think that I'm going to be the one that you punish because you found your worth at 45 years old? It never happened. Not for okay. me. Well, I, can I use myself as an example? I use of course, myself I, as I, an example I, as to why I asked that question. I, I Not everybody love, is the I, same. I, I would love woman I, is the same, right? So the reason that that's my mindset is because for me in particular, first and foremost, I'm 32. I just turned 32. I have been married before. Um, I am divorced because that person had an addiction and we were together for nine years. I don't have children yet. For me, I had been celibate because I believe that, you know, I don't want to add to my body count, if you will. And also, uh, I believe that I'm a, I'm a very, very empathic person. I don't want to claim to be super ultra sensitive because I am emotionally intelligent. I'm not just going to be crying all the time. I don't have, uh, I have the ability to control my emotions. It's just that I grow an attachment, which we all grow attachment and create a soul tie when we are intimate with someone what, what is so a soul for me, tie? What, what is a soul tie could you elaborate on that so a soul tie is like you you when you sleep with someone you exchange what is unseen and it forms a bond in the spiritual realm and so have, for you, me, have you ever seen a soul if you if you let me get to this part that i'm about to get to not, you'll I, understand I, I, I'm, I'm, I feel I'm like we throw words. We, we throw. I feel I'm like we throw different. words around. I feel like we throw words around like soul ties and. I'm not just throwing all, it let, around. Let me I'm, like I'm, spiritual I'm sure exchanges. And I, I'm gonna be honest. I've never seen a spirit. I've never seen souls. I have. Talk. I oh, have. So okay. that, so if you allow me to share go ahead, my go ahead. Spirit, continue. So for me, I'm very empathetic. I'm very spiritually gifted in that way, and I do believe in God. And so with that being said, for me, when I'm with my husband. When I was married, my husband and I were so connected that I knew when he had a headache before he had a headache. I knew when he was hungry before he was hungry. It's almost like I could pick up on his thoughts. I knew when he was depressed. I knew when he was having anxiety to the point where it was freaky. It would freak him out sometimes. But after, after the time of being together, we kind of just, you know, became normal. So with that being said, not everyone is spiritually awakened to know what I'm talking about. 
but the point is it does exist and because i am spiritually awakened in that way i don't want to tie my soul to people to many people that i'm just having a sexual exchange with and then cause dissonance within myself now that's self-awareness for me everybody doesn't have that and i'm not just speaking from throwing so words when you i'm speaking that's from self-awareness. my life experience you said self-awareness, and I just have to interject because I don't ever want to get to a certain point that we can't get back to. That was your husband, correct? That was your husband. And is it safe to say, because I'm married, right? And mm -hmm. um, when you're around somebody enough, yeah, you do know when they're anxious, when they're not. Like, this is just paying attention to that person. I don't think that it has anything to do. I'm being serious, though. Like, I know when my wife's hungry. I know when my wife's horny. I know when she's How not having a good day. How long did it take for you to get there? Hold up. But it's not a spiritual thing. It's literally just a thing of, I know my wife. So you don't think that that's more so of no... Because to say, all right, soul ties, right? If we're tied with each other's souls, because you would... It works both ways, right? Because we're tied, right? Like, we're intertwined, correct? <laughs> right? <laughs> Can we have, I know this is your platform, right? No, now, I'm okay? asking you a question though. I, you don't I'm like, to, you don't like no, to have I'm a gonna, conversation. No, a conversation I do, I do want to have both ways. So I'm asking you a question. Souls are, is, is this, right? If, if we're having, if we have soul ties, the souls are what? They connect, yeah, they're tied and so, together. Yeah, There's an so, exchange happening. Right, so if, if you have soul ties with your husband, then that means that your husband would have to have soul ties with you, correct? Yes. And if, our, an exchange. And, and if our souls, right, because we're soul tied, mm -hmm. so our souls would kind of have to be a reflection of each other, right? Because it would have to, it would have to make sense for the souls to combine. Not all the time. To be honest, not all the time. Not everybody is spiritually awakened to have the same experience. There are times where I told you my ex-husband was had an addiction. So for him, he was always high off of things. So maybe he wasn't able to experience everything I was experiencing all the time. So no, not all the time was it an equal exchange to where he knew when I was sad because he was high. So no, not all the, it's not so definite. But what I'm speaking about is things that I've experienced, but also like I'm a spiritual wellness coach. I share with you in our direct messages that, you know, I like I have publications of me speaking about these types of things. I'm not just sharing off top of my head. Like mm -hmm. I literally have coached couples in this way. I literally have experienced these things on my own to share my life experience with people. And so, you know, I, I just wanted to know if that was my original question was, are we encouraging no sex before marriage? And it's not me trying to be a tightwad. I know everybody is probably not living that life. But for me, I'm different for me because I know who I am. I know I'm like sensitive in that way. I'm not sleeping with everybody because I don't want to be that deeply connected to someone because for me, it don't take a long time for me to pick up those things. It's right away. Like me getting to know you right now, me getting to see you right now and talking with you right now. There's things that I may pick up about you spiritually right now because that's how sensitive I am. But I don't got to know you a long time to pick those things up. Hmm. Okay. Um, um, like I said, whatever you into, I love it. And if you can work it, work it. Um, you pick up on things quick was your husband did your husband have addictions when you first met him or he picked those up he in the did. he did he so you did. didn't pick I up knew on that that he, you, so, so hold up. I, I let you talk i didn't interrupt you so your husband had no it, you don't got to do that baby because we're, we're having a conversation i'm being like, playful to do that, no i'm being playful that, with you you try yeah but you trying to you know what i'm saying you trying to play me don't don't I'm play me while you're being playful I, I'm not so trying anyway to play you. you pick up on things quickly but you didn't pick up on your husband being an addict are you actually and to me, the question, not, are you assuming? Because I can tell you, you said, what I did know. I knew that he he had an addiction to weed. I like her, man. Um, I like her. She she's adorable. Um, and she she's adorable. I love you. Thank you for coming up in the platform. I don't argue with anybody. Damn sure not women. But you see, like, no, I gotta get you out of here because you are here fraud. And then you tried to play me. You like like that's like trying to make a man sassy because. All right, listen. First and foremost, never mind. Thank you for coming up, young lady. I truly appreciate you. You said that I'm rude. I'm cracking up. I like your energy. You might be another woman that runs away from accountability and you don't think that a man should have a safe space to speak. I was quiet. I let her talk. How much more respectful can you be? How much more respectful can you be? <laughs> I'm not offended. I'm cracking up. But anyway, um, but yeah, next question. What's your question, Mama? Talk to me. Yeah, see, a lot of y'all let people play with y'all. Um, I'm not one of those guys, so you can't play with me. 
I'm not a weak man. I'm not any of that. And you're not going to come on my platform and dictate the conversation respectfully. And if there's anybody on the live right now that feels any way about what I did, can you respectfully unfollow me and leave the live? Respectfully. If there's anybody who does not like what I just did, respectfully, you can leave silently. God bless you. This isn't the platform for you. Um, but anyway, next question. You got to ask. Absolutely. And my mind is open. So what happened was we were having a conversation. So there's no way that you can tell me, right? Because I'm a, I'm a person that listens. I do this for a living. I literally talk to tens and thousands of people, tens and thousands of people, right? So that makes me an expert because I have way over 10,000 hours in on what I'm doing, right? It's not, not a good conversation going if I'm being cut off. Let me get, let me get you out of here as well. You another one, probably bitter, single. Let me get you. 